And the passage of Scripture today, uh, Numbers 13, where he said to the Moses, uh, 13, second, and he told to the Moses, uh, send the people uh, to the land of Canaan, and I, I give uh, to the Israels this land and send. And Moses, then Moses sent them. And behind the Moses' back is a long way, and God has performed so many miracles. And God allowed many things to happen so that His faith has grown. And the most important is that there is nothing, nothing could can stop his plan. And not much time passed by, and the little still is rest to reach the uh, promised land. And they could see the wonderful gardens and wonderful lands. They can see it. And what happened? Moses uh, got told to the Moses, send people to check the land. And we all know the story. And when they went to, to take a look, and they got back with interesting uh, news. Uh, and it says, they gave Moses the account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is the fru its fruits, but uh, the people who live there, they are strong and a very uh, strong um, uh, cities there. But Caleb said, he said, let's go there and take this land because we can do it, we can take it. But the, uh, but those who uh, went with him, they said, we could not go against them because they are stronger than uh, we are. And they said bad things about the land. And they said, yes, the land, uh, this land eat those who uh, live there. And they, uh, horror, they made up the horror about this land. They, f they forgot about the miracles. Just little time passed by. They already forgot about the time when God led them th uh, through the Red Sea, when the chariots of the enemies flown in, in the sea. These people, they were uh, slaves. They could not, uh, they don't know how to fight. They saw, they saw only... Uh, and now that was the time to just to reach this land, just a little bit, just a little bit. And what's, what happened? And what happened to us sometimes when God says, you have to reach this place? No, but we want to stay on the half of the way. What hinder us from fulfillment of uh, will of God? Those who will uh, bear till the end will be saved. You have to follow God till the end. Tell to your neighbor. And here is Caleb. What says Caleb? And he was about 40 years old, he already grown up, and he, uh, he said, we can do that. Caleb uh, means a uh, brave man, means like a dog that is biting, in a good meaning. Uh, 
And we know that in one country there was a uh, statue of a monument of the dog uh, when her owner was uh, uh, in the hospital and died. This dog, she's uh, it was fa she's was uh, she was faithful and she uh, continued to come to wait for her owner for eight years. And Caleb was faithful. He remembered the, the miracles. When we remember the miracles, what could stop God from uh, re revealing His power? And these people were talking bad things. They saw. They said that we saw uh, the giants there, and, and we were like uh, uh, like grasshoppers. And they saw us too. And yesterday, uh, you were slave. And the only thing you can do, you could build, and you was beaten up. Uh, your ki uh, children uh, were thrown uh, in the river, and now you know that you are me. Uh, you mean something. And what is uh, what was what is changing? You start to think about yourself. Oh, I'm so small against this problem. What can I do about it? And today I want to tell you, when we uh, look into problem and we see when we and look at ourselves, it's we seems to be small, but our God is strong. And once David was standing and uh, and was uh, fighting against the Goliath, and he had such such a zeal, and he stand in a gap. And sometimes the problem seems to be so big and we compare our power, but in our life we have God. Talk to Him. Uh, with what power David was fighting against the Goliath? He was fighting with God's power. And Caleb said, we will reach this land. And what happened then? And in the verse 14, that all the people were crying. Have you seen people? These are negative leaders. The whole nation was crying all night long. Can you imagine what Moses was feeling? People stood against him. Yesterday they were uh, standing against him. They made up uh, an idol. He uh, broke it. And he said, God, uh, have mercy on them. And on this time, God said, I will uh, per uh, and uh, Moses said, God, you could not par uh, uh, destroy them because you are great God. We have to uh, have uh, meeting with God. Uh, we have to realize his power. And then he will uh, reveal uh, the prophetic word and he will give you the word that will change the obstacles and uh, 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 around you. And God says, because my nation de did not believe me, instead of 40 days, they will f go in the wilderness uh, for 40 years. And I have an important message. If you don't believe in God's obedience, you, uh, you lose them. If you not believe, you won't uh, receive it. You have to believe God till the end. You have to go till the end. And those people, they died in the wilderness. They didn't receive God's blessings, and they died there. And those who believed, they received. Some people, they, uh, they lost the uh, fear of God. How much we respect God how much we honor God. And on our way, we have different obstacles, and we get weak, and our faith could be weaker, get weaker. 
And when the ministers of God, they send leaders, they give them a task, they expect them to support people. And when pastor said, we have to do this and that, he uh, doesn't expect people to cry and saying it's impossible. I have to remember that in God, all things are possible. Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, he uh, was close to the end. He said, God, if possible, let this uh, cup passed by me. It was so hard for him. He was asking God, is there other way? No. Let your will be done, not mine. And sometimes uh, we meet people uh, that say, oh, it's so hard for me to live with this husband or with this wife. It's so uh, hard to live with the child that it's uh, that's uh, who is sick and but God says, go till the end. God says, love. Jesus, go till, uh, uh, he go till the end. We didn't find uh, uh, till the blood yet. We have to remember those moments. And I want to testify you. And uh, um, Olga, she was uh, my daughter, she was uh, uh, studying in uh, uh, in the Bible school, mi Bible mission school, and uh, we were happy, she graduated, and we, uh, we sent her with uh, one bag, and when we met her, she brought so much stuff with her, and we we're not uh, just our fa uh, family, but we not uh, just parents, but we took other kids with us. And three days of the conference, uh, conference we are praying, and we are we're so holy during this conference. And we sit in our car, and we're driving back home. And I ask. Uh, uh, to my husband, my, my fell asleep while you are driving, and he started to pray. And I thought, okay, he prayed, and he started to drive faster, and there were two uh, trucks in front of us, and this part of the road was not easy to go, and he and he drove fast, and there was red light, and we stopped there. We heard uh, such a noise, because the truck, uh, the first truck, he fell asleep, and uh, he uh, just hit the second uh, truck. And two trucks were... Uh, destroyed, but people were alive. And if we not pray, uh, if he not go uh, ahead of these uh, two trucks, he, because while he was driving, he didn't feel a peace in his heart. Otherwise, we would be killed between these uh, two trucks and we just uh, were able to say praise God and we had so many situations like that but when we are uh, sensitive to the Holy Spirit uh, God keeps us praise God Sometimes when this kind of things happen, people say, I, I will not go there anymore. But I want to tell you that God is with us on all your ways. If you will, if you are faithful to him, he will be with you. But if you not trust God, how you can see the glory of God. We are intercessors. And when we see the problem, we have to pray and stand before God. And what did Moses? He said, 
and he started to worship God. He said, God, you are loving God. But people, they continue to, f uh, to fight against Moses. What happened in this situation? And Moses said to Aaron, uh, take uh, take the fire and stand between uh, people and God what can stop God it seems to be how much he could bear this people maybe if they suffering the, the hearts will be changed but Moses he t uh, spoke to uh, he said to Aaron stand uh, there where is disaster and today is my word for you stand in the place of disaster stand there with worship stand there with sacrifice stand there stay there with prayer and then God will stop stop God react on our prayers he said call on upon me and I will answer you uh, ask me and I will send you salvation that was God's words sometimes we say God save me but save me this way uh, on uh, this way how I want on my way and sometimes when we are not sleeping God kind of bothering people to pray and once God says I, I, I will go to uh, destroy this city because they are so uh, so bad people and uh, Abraham said no please and Lot was there and he was uh, staying there and he had a dialogue with God and what was interesting God uh, uh, came to Lot and his family and he said uh, leave this place uh, he took them him and his wife on hand wife of Lot she had uh, her her heart left in this city and that's why she was destroyed and Lot said I don't want to go there may I go to this city because it's closer God knows where you have to go don't uh, don't try to uh, set God what to do what happened at the end there are moments when we have trust the Lord and be obedient to his word be obedient to his word don't argue who are you man that you are arguing with God or arguing with the priest with a priest Caleb he wanted to go there he tried to persuade people he was uh, uh, holding the uh, hands of Moses he was fighting for the word of God sometimes we when we say some uh, the word of God and people don't listen to us we kind of okay but be ze uh, have this zeal for God be burning inside for God that's why in our life God is waiting for love and uh, he's waiting for fire God wants us to be uh, on fire God wants to lead us to the promised land and to give us honey and milk but in the f uh, when we face hard uh, hardships we feel ourselves small and we don't give God place when the pandemic uh, uh, came many people were dying and that was kind of fearful and, and there was a family uh, our uh, uh, our relative he uh, 
he couldn't breathe he was in a hospital and he, when he called her his wife he said i'm coming to uh, to meet the lord and he started to say the words of uh, uh uh, the words uh, of goodbye and she started to say the same to him and she called me and said oh uh, our father is dying and I said why because for months he is uh, in the hospital he got tired uh, she said that he is so tired and I said don't let him go you have seven children they go to, they are in school, and just one is grown up enough to get married. Who will take care of your kids? I said, don't, don't say these words. Go to him and say, you have to uh, hold for Jesus. Hold on. So we prayed in other tongues. I'm far, I was far, and I said, God, so uh, his wife came to uh, visit her uh, husband, he said, oh, soon I will die, she said, no, I talked to, uh, to my relative, and she said, you have to get up, and she said, what will I do with children, what, I can, what can I do without you? Who will lead them? Who will take care of them? And since that moment, uh, he started to get better and better. And then he started to breathe himself. And that was God. And when... Yes, amen. 52 years... It's not the time for him to go, uh, to die. I used to think that 50 years is uh, so much. But now, no. When we pray before God and started to say as Moses, Moses started to worshiping God. Abraham started to say, God, uh, have mercy on righteous people. And very often, we don't know what to say to God. Why? Because we don't have enough information about Him. We have to study His Word. And the prayers, uh, the worship, the tears, not the, not the character, but, your, uh, uh, but you, when you humble yourself before God, this will make a uh, difference. Sometimes we are so weak and we don't feel like we are able to pray. And very often God comes to us in such moments. What uh, we eat, uh, what uh, spiritual food we eat, how many times. Or we have such people who will tell you, uh, like uh, such a tutors that will tell you, oh, it's so uh, fearful to go there, don't go there. Oh, I'm not clean enough for God. Uh, when you uh, study, uh, when you serve God on uh, 50%, it's not enough. And some people call giant uh, a glass of wine. And they said, oh, I don't drink much, just a f little bit. But... On this uh, little percent, uh, from other side, you go to hell. You will, uh, you allow evil to come into your life. And I want to read you Bible, passage of scripture about Abigail. Interesting chapter. Abigail. A certain man in Mount who had a uh, property there in at Carmel was very wealthy. He had a thousand goats and this uh, three thousand sleep, which he was 
sharing in Carmel. His name was Na uh, Nabel, and his wife's name was Abigail. She was an intelligent and beautiful woman, but uh, her husband was surely and mean in his uh, dealings. He was a Calebite. How come men from the Caleb's uh, uh, kids, Caleb, powerful, uh, brave man, but here we have different characteristics. And uh, what we see, he was mean person, and in his dealings, and this man was a wealthy man. He went away. He had uh, flocks of goats. He had statues, possibilities. And I notice when people had uh, have uh, flocks, finances, they can allow themselves to be mean, uh, cruel. Why? Because they lose the fear of God. And what happened here? His wealth, that's his power. How, uh, uh, how he gets such a wonderful wife? We don't know, but uh, there were different moments in the East and the, uh, while David was in the wilderness he heard that Nabal was sh uh, uh, sharing sheep so he sent ten young men and said to them go up to Nabal and at Carmel and greet him in my name can you imagine young men boys maybe 12 11 years maybe 13 years old how much can carry the young man? Not much. And David uh, uh, sent them, and uh, he asked Nabal, uh, we keep uh, your flocks, bless us, bless with what you have. And what happened? Say to him, long life to you, good health to you and your ha household, and good wealth to all this uh, is yours. Now I hear that it is ship sharing time. And these people went and say all the words. And Nabal said, who is David and who is the son of Isa? Uh, there are, uh, become so many um, slaves that are running away from the honors. So his boys received very humiliating answer. They are young. They are young men. They get back to David and told all the words to David. Then David said to his people, "To his people, take all your swords." And he took sword himself. And they followed David about four hundred men. Can you imagine? He has just a little bit, but now, because of your disobedience, you will lose everything. And he said, you killed everybody. And when we are not cheerful givers and we think only about ourselves, we will face different situations when we are not uh, honor uh, God's people and refused to help. It's a very dangerous story. And Abigail heard this from uh, one of the servants, a very important moment. Uh, it's good that uh, there, there is man who uh, ran to Abigail and said to her, these people were so good to us and they protect us. Uh, nothing uh, happened to us. And then Abigail took uh, 200 breads, uh, loaf of breads, and she took all these goods. She didn't go. And she didn't start to cry out and cry and said, oh, I'm so poor. 
uh, am I because of my husband? But she started to act. She started to do something. And uh, when she was uh, uh, riding the donkey, and she met David on the road, and David said, yes, it's bad that I was protected, uh, this man and his uh, flocks, he paid me evil for my good, I uh, let God do me this and that if I won't kill uh, him and his people. So he proclaimed what he about to do. And when Abigail uh, uh, acted quickly, she took on her face and she said, let this sin be upon me. Very often we talk to families, and these families, they uh, said, uh, she is bad, he is bad. And we uh, see here this uh, woman, Abigail, she said, let this sin be upon me, be on me. And who did the same? Jesus Christ, he took your sin and my sin, and she said, let this sin be upon me, and let your servant speak to you and listen my word, and let my honor uh, listen to me. Don't pay attention to him, because he is, uh, his name is Nabal, crazy man, and I didn't see your servants. Otherwise, I would honor them. Let it be upon me. I, I missed it. And she said, it's my fault. It's, and now my, uh, my king, don't share the blood. And let all your enemies be like Nabal. She started to bless him. And when we read about Moses, he started to uh, bless the uh, name of God. And here we see the same scheme, blessings. And she said, please forgive your servants. And I, we brought gifts to you and forgive, pardon my uh, uh, your servant and let your household be, uh, be strong. She knew about David. She knew who he is and she started to bless him. She started to improve mistakes of her husband. But she didn't say that he's so bad and so evil. You, uh, this is my fault, she said. And she said, if a man will follow you to kill you, uh, let your uh, life be saved and let God kill all your uh, enemies. She remember. Uh, she remembered the weapon he used against the Goliath. She uh, uh, remind him how he used the little weapon to kill the great uh, Goliath. And these words, this wise word, that uh, uh, humble words, change the attitude of David. And uh, these words, they stopped uh, the army. How we could change the uh, situation? We may be tired and we are about to give up. But here Abigail says, and when God will make you king of Israel, uh, if uh, her husband said that you are nobody, you are slave, but many people knew that uh, he is about to become a king, and she admit his uh, his power. And for us, it's important to admit uh, admit it. And what happened? 
and said David to, uh, to Abigail, Blessed is the God of Israel that sent you uh, to meet me. And David answered to this woman, and blessed be your mind, and blessed you are that you didn't allow me to shed the blood. And uh, God is alive, and he uh, didn't allow me to kill you. If you not come, I would, I would kill people before the uh, sunrise. And here is another word. Don't uh, leave your uh, uh, problem till the sunrise. Perhaps it, that was a night time, but she stood up. She didn't wait till the morning. His reaction was correct. She wanted to change the situation. Very often I see people who committed sin and came to me and said, so, that's okay. But she said, pardon me. So this word is for us. Don't wait for sunrise. Stood, uh, stand up, pray. Don't wait for a uh, suitable time. Uh, Testify, uh, save those who are about to die. And Hebrews and Moses, he was faithful in his house and he proclaimed what was uh, supposed to be said. And Moses knew his place, and Christ is like a son in, in his house, and, ha and his house is we are. And if we uh, fully trust the Lord, fully trust the Lord, why? Because the Holy Spirit says, when you hear the voice of God, don't harden your hearts as during uh, the time of wilderness for the Israels. What could stop cold heart? Uh, that the heart is not, that is not merciful. Don't harden your heart. We have to be sensitive in the house of the Lord. We have to stand in a gap. How David was standing, how Moses, maybe Nikolai or Alona, maybe Maria, uh, Mary, uh, for your loved ones, for your neighbors, for your friends, and let be, let it be uh, the beautiful uh, fragrance for God. There are people who uh, little give, uh, little pray, but they won't receive from God, from God a lot. And God will give back uh, with a big measure. And I want us to pray uh, for the glory of God in our lives so our heart would burn for Him. Let us stand up so that uh, Holy Spirit would rise up uh, intercessors and we may stay in a gap because it's a mission of Jesus Christ. It have to continue through us. This mission have to continue through us and we need to lead people to eternity and stop to the man if he is following to a different direction. Show him where is the real life, where is milk and honey. Dear God, we're thankful to you for your word, for your mercy, that you bear so much, that you are ready to listen and listen us, that you renew your mercy every day, every morning. And I ask you, let our hearts be sensitive to you. Let uh, we have the spirit of Caleb. We want to be faithful to you because this mission, let us bear this mission. We have to sensi be sensitive spiritually. We have to react. We have to be sensitive to you, God. 
open up God, uh, our spiritual ears and our hearts, our mind, and let your name be uh, glorified through uh, among your people. Amen.